Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Say no to rape. Welcome to The Advocate and to a melting pot of thoughts, analysis, and solution. I'll be highlighting the caricature that is the Niger Delta development of what I call commie chop. For those who like dining with a long spoon, Rukewe courageously takes on our decaying healthcare system and reminds us that good healthcare should not be for the privileged few, but for all. Treasure is also talking on a topic that is not for the faint-hearted the recent tragic rape and brutal killing of young girls in their prime. Seydou is unflinching as he attacks a story that has ignited the global grapevine, the killing of George Floyd, and then Akiwumi Adishino and the African Development Bank. Omega is not one to shy away from controversy, so he's in good company this week. He's asking whether science is the new God. I wait to hear him answer this one. Since he's fast becoming our new theology expert, Doubtless, you are beginning to feel the pulse on today's edition, bold and unapologetic in taking on those burning issues of the day. You will be well advised to make yourself comfortable. It promised to be an unrelenting hour after the break. Growing up as a child, I remember Hotel de Jordan, Poma de Sofa, Moki de Walk, Bambo de Chop. And that's what the Niger Data Development Commission, what I call him Commit Chop, has done to. One cannot help but notice the accusation, counter-accusation, and show of shame currently going on in the Niger Data Development Commission, a commission supposedly set up for the development of the oil-rich Niger Delta, but which from inception had been turned to a comp venture by government officials and its management, the recent being the allegation of misappropriation and bare-faced fraud between the Interim Management Committee, IMC, of the commission, the former board of the commission, National Assembly, and concerned stakeholders. Fortunately or unfortunately, the head of the former board in Simai Kere, who was the APC governorship candidate in the 2019 governorship election in Akwaibon State, was a deputy governor to the current minister of Niger Delta, Goswin Akwabio, in his first term as Akwaibon State governor. He's the same minister that set up the interim management committee. The question then is, can the minister altruistically set up a committee to probe his former deputy on looking into the affairs of his party members? Your guess is your guess, so leave my guess out of it. As it was even alleged in some quarters that some of the funds purportedly being investigated by the IMC were used to prosecute the 2019 election. I don't know which state. Were. However, one thing is clear and certain in all of it, NDDC is a clear house and cesspool of corruption. Don't ask me how, just follow me. The Interim Management Committee upon inauguration revealed that while carrying on an interim audit of the activities of the former board of the commission, discovered that 3.7 billion naira was paid for the supply of plastic, plastic chairs and that the address of delivery of the same chairs were the same warehouse of purchase. Round three purchase, you could say. The same IMC also alleged that the NDDC 2019 budget was padded with almost 15 new projects by members of the National Assembly. Paddy paddy arrangements. But while the dust was yet to settle on these allegations, some documents surfaced from some whistleblower NGO which revealed that in 2020 budget for the commission passed before the inauguration of the IMC, 800 million naira was a mark as contingency fund for regional road repair. But in a request for vehement made to the National Assembly by the IMC, which request by the provisions of the act setting up the NDDC is illegal, the IMC claimed to have spent 25 billion naira instead as contingency fund in six months. They spent seven billion or so, as claimed by them, on funds for training Niger Delta youth on welding. Ha! 3.4 billion naira on entrepreneurial development, and then 13 billion on 
spend on the headquarters. With all of this spending, you still wonder why there's massive unemployment, kidnapping, and youth restiveness in the, in, in the region. Even if it's free money, you don't have to spend it recklessly. But now hear this. On the 10th of January 2020, a memo from the Office of the Assistant Director General of Health requested for payment for some health and education project files, which was said to have been sent to the acting MD and was illustrated as purchase for Matana kits, 1.1 billion, cholera vaccine, 800 and 680 million, Lassa fever protective kits, 903 million, and then Lassa fever kits, 1 billion. Outstanding size equipment, 292 million. Again, on the 6th of April 2020, during the lockdown, where everybody was at home, while the company also was on lockdown, the head of the procurement unit, for and on behalf of the acting MD, awarded the contract to the company known as Signora Concepts Services Limited for the purchase of emergency specialized medical personnel protective equipment, PPE, for head workers and community based sensitization campaign against the spread of COVID 19 and other communicable disease in the ninth state of Niger Delta for the sum of 5.5 billion. Same contract was awarded on the same day for the same item by the same persons to another company, OMSEV Global Limited, to the tune of 4.8 billion naira. With all of this, yet nobody got any palliative, as it was even alleged that the acting MD's aide, a militant, went away with 1.175 billion million naira meant for palliative. 10.3 billion to sensitize Suna, make Una the fear God. No wonder some people have even argued that this pandemic has been turned to COVID-419 by some government agencies. From the foregoing, it is visible to the blind and audible to the deaf that NDDC has become a big conduit for siphoning government funds and has been turned into a comp chop instead of a commission. And the earlier the government does something about it, the better. I would therefore advocate that if the president is indeed sincere in cleansing the urgent table, he does not need an interim management committee, but a board properly constituted. Given the fact that members of the committee are neither auditors nor accountants, and their tenure is open-ended, all the president needs is a reputable forensic auditor to transparently look into the books of the commission. Why giving the EFCC the requisite backing and matching order to immediately bring to book anyone found culpable, be him a senator, Minister, management, or casual staff, even contractors who collected monies for job not executed. That way, he would not only have shown strength of character to fight corruption, but would be sending a strong signal to others that is indeed aware and sincere in fighting corruption. Otherwise, the government should forget and stop this noise about fighting against corruption as its people are neck deep in it. And I admonish you, let's continue to advocate for a better society with our voice. Well, I do not have um, the, the ability to reel out numbers as you did. So I'm just going to read out what I have also gathered, you know, regarding the monumental corruption at the NDDC. Now, there is a 641 million naira for media and communication support for forensic audit. There is a 39.4 million naira for consultancy on rebuttal of media attack. There is another 51 million naira monthly for two months for hotel bills for the acting MD. It's not, I'm not done. Other members were also getting 40 million naira for hotel bills. And this is an arrangement that is not contained in the NDDC Act. What's going on? Nine states of the Niger Delta, one would think with all of these monies, it will be a par there will be paradises. No. Nah, nah. Uh, it's I'm, I'm amazing. Gonna, uh, you know, for me, I, I've, I've, been, in, I've been in government, um, so I understand some of those things. I, I understand how this play works, and especially, uh, especially the COVID one. Yes. So every, everybody COVID said, everybody creates um, proposals, Head, yes. and headings, uh, you know, so it's used as a conduit. I think for me, really, it goes back to this thing about weak institutions. Um, so when you have a weak institution, or when an institution has been deliberately weakened, um, you're going to find this corruption. Um, it, you know, I think the, the way that I see it is that if you're strengthening institutions, if you don't politicize even the work of the people who are supposed to fight corruption, you know, because so you have this situation where uh, certain people are seen as, um, how shall I say it, they are protected. You cannot investigate them. They are part of the system. Mm. Um, they took part, they helped 
this particular administration government get to power, therefore they're, they're shielded. Once you have this kind of thing, then people will always run under it. And um, you know, it's, it's very helpful to hear this whistleblower you know, put out this kind of information. But I think that we need, there de definitely needs to be you know, action on the part of the, of the EFCC about what needs to be done to, yeah. to, to get to the I, bottom of it. Let's, let's quickly get Seydu and Rukewe. I'd like to um, just add to what uh, Emeka just said. Um, I think there's clearly a lack of accountability, and uh, you can see this is obvious. Um, I would want to put the blame squarely on the side of the supervising uh, parastatal, because these agencies, you know, they have uh, parastatal that they report to, and in this case, it's the presidency. There is no accountability. You don't have the... Uh, uh, they don't track KPIs. You don't have monthly reports. So of course, when you have, when you don't have anybody checking you, these things are bound to happen. And don't forget, this is an agency that is awash with a lot of money. So uh, I'm not surprised. All of those figures we're reeling out are just normal things that will happen when you don't have clear accountability. Yeah, Rukawa. Yes, um, very interesting topic, um, Barberis. Um, very topical. You see, um. This would be so laughable if it wasn't so tragic. Indeed, those numbers that you reeled out are really mind-boggling. Because I'm from the Niger Delta, it really feels very hurtful. Now, you see, there's this vicious cycle that you talked about, recycling politicians from governor to minister to board chairman. Everyone wants to be in the NDDC or have a role to play in it. Why is this happening? Because it's a cash cow. And like you said, you know, they use it to, to launder money or for elections or whatever, what have you. But you have to talk about the people that they bring in. So you have a board that is inaugurated, dissolved. Then you have interim board that has no, like you said, no end to it. Yeah. And these people are not even specialists. And most of them, many of them are politicians who are actually really quite broke because they actually ran for previous elections and lost. And so you bring them in, and then obviously they start taking um, advantage of all these huge, um, uh, what's it called, allowances and whatnot. But you've not talked about the civil servants, what we call evil servants. So new people come in on board and say, oh, Oga, okay, this is now what they do, I'm saying, so sign here, sign here. So those are systematic problems that we have to challenge um, for the status quo to improve. Indeed, a body like NDDC or any good government person so cannot have lifelong civil servants there because they know how the system works, they know how to corrupt it, yeah. they know how to bleed it. Yeah. And so for me, I think that for this real change to occur, this body cannot stand as it is. I'm from Delta State, as you know. Yeah, it should, should be in terror, sure, terror the management. Of the money is not equal among the nine states. Now, you said there's a constitution about the NDDC that yeah, determines yeah, the certain amount to come from a certain area at a certain time and all that, and it needs to go around. But what if the chairman comes from a different um, place that is not even producing much oil? Is he going to represent us in Delta yeah, State uh, or any uh, other state that is producing? This okay. whole thing needs to be reformed. That's what I right. think. <laughs> well, <laughs> unfortunately, um, for lack of time, um, we have still have, have other topics to deal with. It's time to hear Rookie's advocacy all the way from Canada. Welcome back, Rookie. Distance is no obstruction, thanks to Zoom. Let's zoom in. No, libraries, it certainly isn't, since the spirit of the advocate unites us all. After the break, I'll be raising an issue that all of us have a common interest in. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, it does, it does. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. 